This is Unit 4 Tissues. We are going to talk about the four types of tissues, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous, describe the function of cell junctions, glands, and membranes, and identify some of the tissues specified on your list. Uh, mostly that will be done during your lab. If you remember the very first lecture that we did in Unit 1, we talked about the organization of anatomy and physiology, and we have done the uh, chemistry in Unit 2, and we just finished up cells in Unit 3. We are now doing tissues, which is basically a group of cells that have the same function. Okay. And so again, a group or a layer of cells with a similar function is referred to as a tissue. There are four types of tissue in the human body, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. And those four tissues make up organs, which is the next level up. And so actually, next unit, you'll actually be starting one of the organ systems. So this slideshow is mostly going to discuss epithelial connective muscle and nervous tissue. And when you get to the test or other quizzes that you may have, you are going to want to remember uh, the characteristics of each. There are lots and lots of examples of each one, and you won't have to necessarily recognize them by looking. Um, there are a couple that you should know that you'll go over in lab just by looking at the image, but mostly you need to know the difference of, difference of these when it comes to the characteristics. So let's start with epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue protects. Okay, it lines hollow organs and tubes and protects that from whatever is in the space. So the lining of your stomach is epithelial tissue, for example, and it protects uh, the tissues underneath from the acidic uh, environment of the stomach. The liquid and the fluid in there is very acidic and it would otherwise burn through uh, the walls of the stomach if it didn't have that epithelial tissue lining uh, it. The epithelial tissue also absorbs things. Okay, so the stomach absorbs alcohol, for example. The small intestines absorb uh, nutrients. The epithelial tissue is that layer between everything else and whatever's in that space. Because remember, epithelial tissue always lines hollow organs and tubes. It acts as a filter, uh, the kidney uh, tubule cells are filtering out the, what you want to keep versus what waste you want to remove in the urine. And some of these tissues also secrete things. Stomach epithelial tissue is protecting the stomach, but it's also secreting acid and other enzymes to help break up food. Some of the characteristics, um, the cells in epithelial tissue are tightly connected or attached to each other. It's a, uh, cells with no spaces in between, in other words. It has a lumen or a space on one side and a attached to the tissue underneath via a basement membrane. That's what BM stands for there. So if you look at that bottom picture, the cells are the white things with the nuclei in the middle. The top of these cells have some cilia and there's a space above that. And then underneath this layer of cells is the basement membrane, which is what attaches it to the cells underneath. There are no blood vessels within epithelial cells, only underneath. They also uh, reproduce very rapidly. They're easily fixed. When your skin sloughs off or the lining of your stomach wears out, your body makes new ones very rapidly. Where do you find epithelial tissue? It's all over the body. Because it lines cavities and organs, every hollow organ and tube in the body is lined with epithelial tissue. The blood vessels, the entire digestive tract, the uterus, the uterine tubes, the vas deferens in the male, skin is also epithelial tissue. On one side of epithelial tissue, uh, again, is a space, and that space is always called a lumen, and it's attached to the tissues underneath uh, via the basement membrane, although in some cases the basement membrane is also called the basal lamina. Yeah. Epithelial cells are tightly uh, packed together, but there are no blood vessels within that. The blood vessels are underneath the epithelial tissue. So when we shed skin cells, for example, we do not bleed unless we get all the way down to the tissue underneath. 
Epithelial tissue reproduces rapidly, um, again to replace it as it wears out. It is categorized or grouped based on how many layers it is. If it is one layer thick, it's called simple epithelial tissue. If it's more than one layer of cells, it's stratified. The second way you group epithelial tissue is by shape. Squamous, cuboidal, or columnar are different shapes of cells. So as you can see in the picture, you have simple squamous epithelial, simple cuboidal, and simple columnar. So one layer thick of cells that are squamous or tile-shaped, cube-shaped, or columnar-shaped. You also have in the body stratified squamous, our skin is that, many layers of flattened cells, stratified cuboidal, and pseudostratified columnar, which looks like it's stratified, but it actually uh, is not. Pseudostratified columnar um, that's ciliated is found in your uh, trachea, for example. We also have transitional epithelial tissue. Transitional means um, it looks stratified sometimes, and then when that organ is stretched or, or bigger, it's simple. Um, for example, your bladder has transitional epithelial, and as it fills up full of urine, it stretches, and the layer of epithelial cells is only thin, uh, is thinner, um, versus when after you urinate, it kind of folds back up on itself, and the layers, there's many layers. There's also embedded goblet cells within epithelial tissue, and goblet cells secrete mucus. Sometimes there's embedded glands, but the goblet cells are probably the most common. And again, you have goblet cells in your trachea that secrete mucus, um, in the intestines that secrete mucus, because it keeps everything moving in the lumen uh, nice and slippery and slimy. Or in the case of your trachea, it catches bacteria so it can't get down into your lungs. So here's some different examples of epithelial tissue. Simple squamous found in lining your air sacs in your lungs. Simple cuboidal in the kidney tubules. Simple columnar in the intestines. Stratified squamous in your esophagus and your skin. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar in the trachea. And transitional in your bladder some different pictures there. If you want more pictures, you just type in histology epithelial tissue into Google and you'll get a ton of them. Within epithelial tissue, usually columnar and cuboidal, you have glands. Glands always secrete a product, okay, and they can be endocrine or exocrine. An endocrine gland secretes the product into the blood. It's going into the body. Exocrine gland secretion is to the outside. And you should know that di the digestive system is considered outside because it's a tube from your mouth to your butt and it's open at both ends. So it's actually a secretion into the, your stomach or your intestines is considered exocrine. There's a little picture of an exocrine gland there and it shows the secretion being pushed to the outside. Sweat glands are exocrine. Hormone glands are endocrine. They're secreting a product, like a hormone, into the blood. And last, before we move to the next type of tissue, here's a picture of uh, columnar epithelial with embedded goblet cells. Those big white things are goblet cells secreting mucus. Now, like I said, epithelial cells are very uh, tightly connected to each other. You don't want things to go in between the cells, so there's they tend to be packed together and to hold the cells together you have different kinds of intracellular junctions. Tight junctions fuse the cells to the point where nothing can get between them. The little two red dots there or pink dots is an example of a tight junction. Desmosomes hold the cells together but still allow for things to go between the cells. So for example, if you were standing next to somebody and your shoulders and hips and legs were right next to them, that's tight junctions. You can't get anything between. But if you hold hands with somebody, you're connected to them, but things can still go under or over your arms that you're holding together. That would be more like a desmosome. 
Gap junctions hold cells together, but they're actually tunnels between two cells, and that allows for transport of, of stuff between uh, two cells. So if they were connected by a gap junction, calcium might flow between the two cells, for example. You also have attachments that come and go. They're kind of temporary connections called cell adhesion molecules or CAMs. So these things are examples of what hold cells together. The second type of tissue is connective. Connective is the most abundant type of tissue um, compared to epithelial muscle and nervous. There's a lot of it. And the main difference between this tissue and the other ones are the cells don't touch each other. They're kind of floating around in this gunk called matrix. The matrix has fibers in it and other stuff, but the cells themselves don't really touch. Not like epithelial where the cuboidal cells are all lined up together. Okay. Connective tissue functions to connect things or it holds uh, things together. It tends to be a stabilizing influence, I guess, in the sense that it uh, holds different types of tissues or things together in the cell. Um, the fibers and uh, in the matrix, um, again, can be hard or soft depending on what else is in that matrix, but it holds all those structures kind of in place. In an athlete, um, knee injuries are very common and there's a lot of connective tissue uh, in your knee. Tendons are connective tissue, ligaments are made of connective tissue, bone is connective tissue, and cartilage is connective tissue, as is blood. So these are all things that are kind of holding everything together and when you wrench or pull a tendon or a ligament in a knee it causes all kinds of problems and it doesn't feel very steady. Things aren't being held together very well. Connective tissue is found all over the body. Again, it's the most abundant. Um, the matrix, or what makes up the stuff or that gunk that the cells are floating around in is what defines connective tissue. So the matrix is liquid in blood. The matrix is ossified or mineralized fibers in bone that makes it very hard. Adipose tissue, cartilage, bone, Tendons and ligaments, loose and connected and dense connective, are all part of the connective tissue family. The cells that secrete the matrix are called fibroblasts. That's kind of a generalized term. In some tissues, they have more specific names, osteoblasts, for example, in bone. Um, but fibroblasts secrete the fibers, and they tend to be fixed in place. F F F. Fibroblasts are fixed in place and tend to be releasing the fibers. The other two cells found in connective tissue move around and clean up the mess. These are the mast cells and monocytes, MMMM. Mast cells and macrophages, which are really white blood cells, kind of move around and they clean up broken stuff, they degrade things that might not be working anymore or any pathogenic material that's around. They can be involved in the allergic response. Mast cells will become active if you're exposed to something that you react to, for example. It releases histamine and causes all the side effects of, of that, like hives and wheezing and sneezing and that type of thing. So fibroblasts are fixed in place. Macrophages and mast cells move around and clean up the mass. The fibers that the fibroblasts secrete include collagen and elastic fibers. Collagen fibers are known for their strength and elastin fibers are known for their stretchiness or their ability to bounce back into shape like a rubber band. Reticular fibers are also collagen, just tends to be thinner collagen, and you find those in organs where cells need to be held in place like the liver or spleen. If you've ever eaten liver, it's kind of chewy. It's because of that reticular connective fiber. It's kind of hard to break that down. The different types of connective tissues are shown here. Um, blood, lymph, 
loose connective or areolar, adipose, cartilage, bones, tendons, and ligaments. All of these are made out of connective tissue. Okay, And they vary a lot. You wouldn't think blood and bone would belong to the same category because blood's a liquid and bone is pretty hard solid. But they are. They're, they're both considered connective tissue. There are membranes in the body that you should know a little bit about. Serous membranes, and I think I mentioned this before, serous membranes secrete serous fluid, which is like water, and that keeps uh, friction down to zero, actually. So that visceral pericardium around your heart has is a serous membrane, and the parietal pericardium is lining the heart cavity. Those two membranes rub against each other, but because of serous fluid, the, the friction is zero versus how it might, you know, if you rubbed your hands together very long, you get a blister there. You don't want that to happen when organs or organ systems are moving around. You also have mucous membranes like that lining your trachea and your nose, um, also in your intestines. Mucus helps catch bugs, helps keep everything moving along. Cutaneous membrane is sometimes used as your skin. Don't use that too much, and we'll talk about the skin system in Unit 5. And then you have synovial membranes, which secrete synovial fluid um, at the joints, and we'll talk about that when we get to the bones and joints, which is Unit 6. So we have talked about epithelial tissue, and we've talked about connective tissue. Uh, the last two are muscle and nervous. Muscle tissue the function of muscle is to contract. Okay, and that should be pretty obvious. We have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. Skeletal muscle is attached to bones and it's under voluntary control. Okay, so we decide when to move skeletal muscle. Smooth and cardiac are not voluntary. We do not control that consciously. Smooth muscles are found in organs, lining of um, or in the walls of arteries and veins, that type of thing, and cardiac muscle is found in the heart. Okay, here's a little table that kind of compares uh, the different ones. Um, skeletal muscle, again, attached to bones, it's voluntary, multinucleated, and usually it's striated, you can see little lines in it. Smooth muscle found in hollow organs and tubes, like your intestines or your stomach. Um, the contractions are a little longer but and sustained in smooth muscle. Cardiac cells are found only in the heart and they are involuntary. You don't control your heartbeat, for example. You can consciously try to slow down or speed up your heart, but in general most of us can barely change heart rate at all consciously. Cardiac muscle is striated, branched, and only has one nuclei per cell. Last is nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is found in the brain and spinal cord, or the nerves. It's made up of neurons and neural glial cells. Neurons are the ones that send impulses, and that's a picture of a neuron there. The big purple circle in the middle is the cell body with a dense dark almost black center is the nucleus and then have all these branches sticking out of it. Some of the branches are dendrites which collect information and one branch, the one that's going down towards the bottom right, is the axon. And as the impulse goes down the axon at the end the neurotransmitter is released and it sends up another active, uh, sends another impulse to the next neuron Okay, um, neurons again send impulses. Neural glial cells are cells that support the neurons. Hold the blood vessels, clean up the messes, get rid of garbage, produce cerebral spinal fluid, all that kind of stuff. So nervous tissue is made up of neurons which send impulses and neural glial cells which support uh, the neurons. Okay. Neurons function to send impulses to the brain, and from the brain it sends information back to effectors telling them what to do. I thought this cartoon was kind of cute. You'd get a kick out of what neurons do. So if you looked at pictures of some of these, could you make a good guess at whether it was 
epithelial connective muscle or nervous? Okay. How about which tissue type has a basement membrane? Hopefully you said epithelial. Which one contract or which one has a matrix that cells can float around in? That would be connective. Which one contracts? That would be muscle. Which one would you find lining hollow organs and tubes? Hopefully you said epithelial. Okay, which one would include cartilage? That would be connective. And that is pretty much unit four. Don't forget to do the reading assignment. Check out the associated quizzes, uh, quizlets, and check out any other links you might be interested in in Canvas. Otherwise, don't forget, you can always email me if you have questions.